So in this lecture, we want to look at reduced relative clauses. These are things that start as relative clauses, but then reduce to different phrases. So we have two things we need to look at here. My cousin speaking at prom and wore a hat made from persimmons. We could say my cousin who is speaking at from wore a hat that is made from persimmons. So we're going to see what happens. So these are the different types of phrases that relative clauses are going to reduce to. And you'll see it's pretty simple in order to make them. The general process for each of these is we delete relative pro plus the not, well, maybe the be verb or any of the auxiliary elements such as uh, progressive, perfect, or the passive. We cannot delete modals, and typically we actually do not delete auxiliaries as well. So let me just write out this whole thing here. So these are the types of phrases we can delete in order to make different phrases. So the man who is sleeping on the couch, originally this would be a progressive, and we see the verb with the present participle ing on it. So it'll be reduced to what's called a present participle phrase. Uh, in the case of a statue that was shown, we have a passive, and then we have the V with a past part on it. So this will reduce to a past participle phrase. The goat that is on the farm, so this will just reduce to a prepositional phrase. And then some cheese, which is moldy and old, or some cheese, which is my favorite. Um, these will reduce just to noun phrases or adjective phrases, and these will have their own special types of functions. So we'll be investigating these in this section. So here's an example of a pres part phrase in action. The doctors working hard were concerned by the new medicine. So we can identify that it's a present participle phrase because we can say something like the doctors that were working hard. So we can put that that plus the progressive back in. So what we're going to label this as for working hard is a present participle phrase because it has no subject, so it's not a clause. And then we're going to label the verb as a present participle with the type inside. So this is working. Uh, we're working hard, so an adverb phrase adverbial that's describing the working in this case. But we don't have a direct object, so it's not transitive. We don't have a predicate nominal, so it's not a be verb, and so on. So you can think of present participle phrases as just relative clauses that are missing that relative pronoun and a noun phrase, and we don't actually get a verb phrase inside. We just get a present participle phrase. So uh, that's what the present participle phrase looks like, which means for our structure so far, my cousin speaking at prom wore a hat made from persimmons. We now get that this speaking at prom is a present participle phrase modifier, where speaking is an intransitive verb, present participle, that takes a prepositional phrase adverbial after because it's talking about the location. So that's the structure so far of the present participle phrase. So here's an example of a past participle phrase. The pumpkins grown last month became moldy. So this was formed from the pumpkins that were grown last month became moldy. So we can see in this particular case, we would have a passive and then we'd have pumpkins grown last month by someone. So this would be a transitive verb. But in terms of our structure now that we've had deletion occurring, what we would get is that the passive and the that would be deleted, so we just get grown last month. So we call this a past participle because it has the V past participle marker on it, grown rather than uh, grew. So it's acting as a transitive verb, it's a modifier. We don't see the logical actor in this past participle phrase, but we do see the NP adverbial last month. So the pumpkins that were grown last month, the pumpkins grown last month, became moldy. So this is the final structure for today, and it's happening early, but there's still more we got to cover. So wore a hat made from persimmons. So this would be made. We would have had that was made from persimmons, but we would have had a deleted passive in this case. So this is going to be a past participle made, acting as a transitive verb. So someone made a hat from persimmons. And then we have our PP adverbial from persimmons on the right here. So that is how we can do past participle phrases. So I want you to try to identify the present, the present participle phrases and past participle phrases in these sentences and see if you can label at least the verb types. 
So pause the video, try it yourself. And here we go. The students sitting in this lecture hall are registered for Ling 200. So this is the students that are sitting in this lecture hall. So this is a present participle phrase. That's what this is. And this verb sitting is a present participle. And it's not sitting something, it's just an intransitive verb, so a pres part vi. Okay, I preferred the third book written by the ghost author. So that was written by the ghost author. So this is now going to be a past participle phrase because we see the en on the verb. And uh, ghost author writes the third book. So this is a past part that is acting as a transitive verb in terms of its arguments. Okay, finally, the only Maori song playing all night was uh, Po Kare Kare Ana. So the only Maori song that was playing all night. So this is the ing form. This is going to be a present participle phrase acting as a modifier. And we have playing. It's not playing something, it's just playing all night. So this is a present participle. And the verb inside is acting as an intransitive verb with all night being a noun phrase adverbial. So hopefully you're able to identify these. You just need to use the that was trick and it works every time. Because relative clauses can be restrictive or non-restrictive, we can have present participle phrases and past participle phrases being restrictive and non-restrictive too. So artists painting landscapes are excited about colors. This is restrictive. We're talking about artists and then we're limiting the set to those only painting landscapes, as we can see in the picture on the right. Or the cookies made in a star shape are really burnt. We're talking about cookies in general, but then we're restricting it to those only made in a star shape, which we can see on the picture on the right. So we're not saying all the cookies are burnt, we're restricting that set to saying the cookies made in a star shape are burnt. Now in terms of the non-restrictive participle phrases, what's interesting about these is that they can move around. So the comma is still the main hint, but these can move to the end of the sentence or the beginning. So cats purring without reason are interesting creatures. But we can say cats are interesting creatures purring without reason. So it's occurring here and it's moving to the end. Or purring without reason, cats are interesting creatures. So cats purring without reason, we're moving it to the front of the sentence. And we can do this with past participle phrases as well. So Misha tired from chasing mice was sleeping all day. Misha was sleeping all day tired from chasing mice. So we have that movement or tired from chasing mice, Misa was sleeping all day. So we see movement there. So the question you should ask yourself when you see these phrases at the beginning with a comma, what is it modifying? It should be modifying a noun if you're looking at a present participle or past participle phrase, if you put it back into its original position. So I want you to determine what type of phrase or clause each underlined one is and whether it's restrictive or non-restrictive. So pause the video, try it yourself. And now I'll go over solutions. So Misha, comma, who I love dearly, comma, is my cat. So this is a relative clause. We have the who is structure, and this is going to be non-restrictive because we have commas. Okay, the cat that annoys Misha belongs to my neighbor. This is another example of a relative clause, but this one is restrictive because we're saying the cat that annoys Misha, no comma. Okay, Misha, who annoys me at night, sleeps in the afternoon. This is the same case as the first one. It's relative clause, non-restrictive. But now we get into more interesting ones. So the one running around all night is Misha. The one who is or who was running around all night is Misha. So this is a present participle phrase and we don't see any commas, so this is restrictive. Okay, Misha was chasing mice all night, excited from their high-pitched sounds. So we can see some movement could have occurred here. Misha excited from their high-pitched sounds, was chasing all the mice. Okay, so because we have this here, we have excited. This is the past participle form. So this is a past participle phrase, and it's being moved around. So this is non-restrictive. Okay, finally, barking without reason, the dog was running through the bushes. So we could say the dog, comma, barking without reason, comma, was running through the bushes. So this is a present participle phrase that has been moved around. So this is also non-restrictive.
So that's how we can deal with restrictive and non-restrictive present participle phrases and past participle phrases. Now we can include aspect and voice into our participle phrases as well. So we can have a normal present participle, the woman writing the novel. We can have a perfect present participle. So we would have our perfect having written 12 pages. So this would be, uh, what did you write? A perfect plus a VT. But this perfect would not be labeled as a perfect. It would be labeled as a pres participle perfect because the first word is having. It has that ing on it. It's a present participle. Uh, the perfect progressive part present participle, same thing, pres part perf. But now we're going to have a prog after. And then writing in this case would be an intransitive verb. We can have a passive. So being written. So here we have a transitive verb. But we see being. This is going to be a pres part acting on the passive in this case. You can have passive, passive perfects and just regular past part phrases too. So we can see a variety of these and they would be handled just as you expect them. So here is a restrictive passive present participle. So the book being written by Jane is a horror novel. So we see being written by Jane. We have what looks like a passive, so this is a present participle. Passive, present participle phrase mod, and then written is the verb with that past participle on it. So we get written by Jane. Now, what if we do a non-restrictive passive perfect present participle? So I just want to focus on the structure of this and we can look at where it comes from originally. So having been written over 200 years ago, okay, so, Having starts with a perfect with the ing form, so it's a present participle. We have been as the passive and written as our head verb there. So having been written, so we see transitive verb too because it's a past participle phrase. Having been written by someone over 200 years ago. And then comma, it is now considered a classic. So when we ask ourselves, what is having been written over 200 years ago? Really, it's describing it. So it might be a pronoun, it might be an expletive in this case, it looks like an expletive, but we can assume it originated from the position after that noun phrase subject, because having been written over 200 years ago is describing whatever the subject is. So that's why we have movement from this position in the subject, all the way over to just being at the sentence level. It's an adverbial, so it modifies the sentence. That's why we have a sentence coming out to the present participle phrase adverbial, the noun phrase subject, and the passive phrase predicate. So that's how we can do restrictive and non-restrictive participle phrases with aspect and voice.